Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. St. Mark's is a historic congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. We are conveniently located in Myers Park on Queens Road, just south of Charlotte's Uptown and adjacent to the Duke Mansion and the greenery of Edge Hill Park. St. Mark's Church building is easy to find with its marble Christus Victor, while inside, the mid-century design of the sanctuary reaches upward, inspiring us with Christ's blessing and beautiful stained glass windows featuring all the people of God in all their diversity.
Please stand as you are able. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this, the third Sunday of Lent. Today's readings remind us with a very Lenten theme to return to God so that we might live abundantly. The reading from Isaiah reminds us when God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. During the season of Lent, we are encouraged to remember God's thoughts and to model our lives after God's ways. I extend a warm welcome to any visitors who are worshiping with us this morning. Your presence among us is a blessing to us. This morning's service, uh, during the service this morning, we will be installing our new Director of Family Minister, Ministry, uh, Liz Boldman. Um, and so we look forward to Liz's ministry among us, and she has started to, uh, to work with our youth and with our family. I just have a couple of other brief announcements this morning. Um, for those of you who haven't uh, filled one out and perhaps may want to participate, these are uh, uh, order forms for Easter lilies, and uh, also we have Easter boxes, and these are out in the gathering place. Um, please, please feel free to help yourselves uh, to them. And our youth will be giving a brief uh, temple talk this morning about their Mission Madness barbecue fundraiser, and there are some order forms for barbecue. Today is the last day to place those orders. The 8.30 uh, morning service is regathering, and if that's a, a time and a service that is of interest to you, or perhaps on a Sunday when the 10.30 service is a bit late, please join us for worship at 8.30 on Sunday mornings. 
Midweek Lenten worship continues on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. in person and online. Finally, if you've been joining us online or have never been to St. Mark's for worship, please join us at 8.30 or 10.30 or call us or email us that we might get to know you and connect with you. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. In the name of God, who takes away the sin of the world, makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Remembering the waters of holy baptism, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again, and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I would like to invite our youth to come forward uh, for a temple talk. Maddie and Jonathan. Okay. Yo, John, did you watch the Davidson Michigan game? No. What about the UNC Baylor game? I mean, that one was crazy. No. <laughs> do you follow March Madness? I do not. The madness I do follow, aside from yours, is uh, Mission Madness. Smooth transition. Nice. Thank nice you. job. Nice Which job. is our um, fundraiser 
uh, to order barbecue. Today is the last day to order barbecue out in the lobby from Ms. Thompson and Ms. Smith. Um, Maddie? You know, and I heard a rumor that all the proceeds go to our youth group in bettering the youth room, as well as a portion of the proceeds go to Time Out Youth, which is a center dedicated to helping and supporting LGBT youth in Charlotte. So, great cause all around, and some pretty good barbecue and coleslaw, if I do say so myself. The win win. Thank you. Thank you. first reading is from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and deliver yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
spirit is content as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches, for you The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Never, nevertheless, God was not pleased with, with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the, the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish, just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here. 
For three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning. Today's readings are an invitation to abundant life with God. On the surface, this, sounds, this life sounds like something we would leap at. And yet all too often as human beings, we tend to forget about God when it's Monday, Tuesday, through Friday and Saturday and the cares of the world. We allow all of the other interests of our lives, national interests, corporate and economic interests, and even the interests of our families, to pull us away from remembering God in our lives. We allow so many other interests in our lives to define who we are as human beings and allow those interests also to define our neighbor as to who they are and what value they have in our lives. The reading from Isaiah this morning sort of says it all. Incline your ear to me so that you may live. God is saying, listen to my word, for in that word there is life. And then God continues saying, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. A reminder that each day, so many of the things that we value, ways that we live in the world, our thoughts and our acts, don't mesh with God's thoughts and acts. The words of Isaiah, of course, are the foundation of our faith and of our journey in Lent to return to God, to listen anew to God's word, and to realize that there is life, and that life defines who we are and how we look at our neighbor in the world. Return to me and live. Live abundantly. Listen to God's word and live for others. You know, I think the world has always been a noisy place. There are so many passages in scripture that point to that. Elijah only being able to hear God in the silence of God's still small voice. Something we learned that God never shouts over the noise of the world, but God patiently waits for us to quiet ourselves so that we might hear God's voice. But if you're anything like me, it seems like these past, the past couple decades, the world has just gotten noisier and noisier. It's almost inescapable. We have to remind ourselves to turn our technology off occasionally and learn the silence of that reality that invites us into meditation with God. We're constantly bombarded in our 24-7 world of the internet and television. We're told what to think, who to hate, who to be suspicious of. If we hear things enough, we even begin to believe them. The interests of politics, corporations, and nations all vie for our attention. And accordingly, against the noise of the world, God says, incline your ear to me that you might have life. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. Perhaps when you were a child, your parents told you stories about when they were kids or things they saw when they were young. And my father told many stories when I was a small boy, a very small boy. And I enjoyed hearing them. Often they were stories about when my dad had done something wrong, when he was bad. I tell me, Dad, a story about when you, when you were bad. You know, something just seemed to tickle me about that and remind me that it was okay to, you know, fall now and then. But there's a story that my dad told me kind of about the adult world, and it stayed with me. 
and it's, it's, it's a story that I remember every now and then. My dad told me how he remembered seeing one time in a small town in Ohio where he grew up, someone trying to park their car on the street. And the spot was too small for this car. I mean, the car, if you put it in this way, like you'd slide a book onto a shelf between two other books, you could fit the car into the space. But parallel parking, it just wasn't going to work. So my, my dad said the person was frustrated. And they stepped on the gas and rammed the car behind them. And someone standing on the street said, hit him again. And so, and this is the part that I laughed at as a boy, my dad said, and so he did. <laughs> hit him again. Because I was a child, I had no concept of things like auto insurance, and I was still, and I was still learning about how we treat our neighbors in this world. How we treat our neighbors and the things that are theirs. And as I got older and moved, you know, into middle school and then high school and read Luther's small catechism, and those words that Luther wrote about the ninth and the tenth commandment are, are sort of etched into me, that we care for what our neighbor has. We love and serve our neighbor and protect what they have because what they have has been given to them by God. As I've gotten older, this story reminds me that it is always a challenge to try not to listen to those people standing on the street corner saying, hit them again. Those people who are always trying to tell us what we should do, how we should think, and how we should act. It's always a challenge to incline our ear, to quiet ourselves, to calm the anxiety and sometimes anger, and listen to God's voice about what God would have us do, how we should act and live in the world for our neighbor. These words are a reminder that God's words to us, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, are meant to be a moral compass in our lives. The Lord says, come to me and listen so that you might live. And so it's impossible for me to think of that anecdote I just told you in that hit him again line and not realize that in a way we're watching something pretty similar but on a vastly larger scale today in the world. In a place far away from us, Russian forces are seeking to occupy and annex a neighboring nation, hitting them literally over and over again with shells, rockets, and bullets. And against that, the Lord says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. As adults, we look around and we are confronted by ways, the ways of the world, the ways of our neighbors in the world. Do we open our voices and say to those who are standing on the corner shouting, or do we say to those who are acting in the world, you know, somebody might get hurt. This is not how we're supposed to treat or love our neighbor, or do we remain silent? God's words about God's thoughts and God's ways, not always meshing with ours, are something we think about during this season of Lent. We should think about this all throughout the year because it is the central core of our faith that through our relationship with God, we learn how to treat others. We learn how to bear good fruit in our lives. You know, Lent is not simply kind of an old world tradition that we go through each year. It's not a theological luxury to think about God. We forget God and God's presence in our lives at our own peril because our neighbor's needs are forever linked with our needs. Only in listening, listening to God's thoughts and God's ways can we serve and protect our neighbor. The season of Lent is meant to lead us and help us in the wilderness of our lives by offering us, and that image from Paul's letter this morning, water from the rock, the rock that was Christ in the wilderness. 
And in that powerful image in the forgiveness of sins this morning, we're reminded of the waters of baptism that continue to flow over us in our daily lives. God's promises made to us so long ago that are alive in our lives each and every day as we seek to be the water of life for others. In the second reading from Corinthians, Paul offers insight into a very human story. Israel complained and grumbled to Moses in the wilderness. Have you brought us out of Egypt that we should starve in the wilderness? We had it a lot better there. We were slaves, sure, but we had enough to eat. And so complaining, they departed from community with God and sinned against God and their neighbor. And so Paul writes, do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. I think all of us know that complaining, sometimes it works. We, we've got that phrase, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. But there's a time that we know that complaining has a limit. We need to, we need to be the change we want to see. We need to be the Christianity in the world we want to see. We need to be the church in the world that we want to see. We need to be the compassion and forgiveness in the world that we want to see. Complaining has a limit. We are to embody that love. We complain about our work. We complain about to City Hall about our community. We complain to our family about a variety of things. But most of all, I think we complain to God. We're angry about the world. And God invites us to live abundantly for our neighbor so that we might live with hope. When we help our neighbor, we begin to realize that we can make a difference in the world. And slowly it gives us hope and a way out. As Paul says, each of us are being tested, but if we rely upon God, God will not let us be tested beyond our limits, but will provide us with a way out. The way out is by living and serving God and our neighbor. In Jesus' parable of the fig tree today, Jesus reminds us that our lives are to bear fruit that is what gives hope. That is the way out of our testing. What animates you and drives your thoughts and ways in the world? Are, are they the other voices in the world around us telling us what to do and how to act? Or is it the quiet moments that you spend with God that renews your spirit to live in this world again today for others? During the Second World War, the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote about not living in fear, about not living in the fear of someone who could simply kill your body, but to recognize that all of us live before God all the time, the one who can destroy both our body and our soul. Jesus' example of the fig tree is such a warning, and that's what we remind ourselves during Lent that as Christians, we journey through the world and are to bear good fruit. Now, there's grace in this parable this morning. God simply doesn't come into the vineyard and demand that the vine keeper dig up and destroy the tree. God says, okay, we'll give it another year. Dig around the roots. Prune off the limbs that aren't bearing fruit. Fertilize it and then it will grow. And that's what God does for us each and every day, and that's what we're trying to concentrate on during the season at Lent as we anticipate the new life Jesus gives us at Easter, not only Easter, but every single day. What kind of fruit does your life bear? During Lent, that's a good question to think about. Does your life bear fruit for others? Does your life support others and help others on their journey? Am I able to be grace in someone's life? The season of Lent is a season of grace, a season in which we remember that God is always forgiving us over and over. During Lent, take time to pray. Take time to fast from the world. During Lent, take time to give to others. Return to the Lord and live. Return to God.
and bear the fruits of compassion and care for your neighbor in this world, in our community here, and pray for communities far away. Please stand as you were able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to invite Liz Goldman to come forward and Charles Lakeman and Karen Peet. I've asked Charles as chairman of the Vision and Search Committee to say some words of introduction about Liz and also Karen Feaser as representing Congregational Life Committee to present some words to you all. Well, good morning. Good morning. We are very pleased today to in officially welcome Liz uh, and install her in a few minutes um, as the new Director of Family Ministries here at St. Mark's. Um, it's been a long journey um, and we've had some ups and downs. 
but it's been uh, a spirit-led journey. It's been a good experience, and I truly believe that in Liz, we have a gifted, talented, and enthusiastic uh, person to, to, uh, to join our ministry. Now, there's some information about Liz in here, but I thought I might add a couple of things that may not be in here. Um, she, clearly, she's, uh, she's well-educated and has traveled quite a lot. To do that takes a lot of energy. So she's a very energetic, very enthusiastic person. When you see somebody bouncing around the building, <laughs> bouncing around the congregation, the, the, the property here, it will probably be Liz. Okay. Uh, this is fantastic. That's exactly what we are looking for, uh, for our youth, youth uh, program. Our youth, being parents of two of them, are high energy. We know that. And I'm too old to keep up with them. So it is fantastic that we bring Liz here, uh, who's got the energy, and be able to keep up and be, bring that sort of enthusiasm for this most important ministry. So I'm proud to introduce her, pleased to introduce her here. And I know that many of you have already welcomed her and will continue to welcome her to, do, to this important ministry. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. So I am here on behalf of the Congregational Life Committee. And first, <laughs> I would like to just say thank you to all of you for your kindness and your generosity. Thank you so much for um, doing what you have done to welcome Liz with the pounding that we sponsored. Um, Liz, we are just delighted to have you here. We welcome you to St. Mark's family. This envelope is full, and I do mean full, <laughs> of gift cards and also notes of welcome that we would like to present you um, as you go out after the service, you may look at the table over there. There are a lot of items there. You may need some help loading your car after church, and we will be glad to do that. So I would like to present you these and welcome you to St. Mark's family. We're very excited to be able to serve with you, and we know that you will be a blessing to St. Mark's. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, So, after prayerful deliberation, we of St. Mark's Lutheran Church certify that Laura Liz Boldman has been appointed to work as Director of Family Ministry. Thank you, Charles. I invite the congregation to turn to page six of uh, the bulletin with the... Oh. <laughs> Our Lord, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. Liz, you stand among us as one called to render a particular service, a gift from God to inspire us to love and to good works. A reading from Romans. Just as each of our bodies has several parts and each part has a separate function, so all of us, in union with Christ, form one body, and as parts of it, we belong to each other. Our gifts differ according to the grace given us. If your gift is prophecy, then use it as your faith suggests. If it administration, then use it for administration. If teaching, then use it for teaching. Let the preachers deliver sermons, the almsgivers give freely, the officials be diligent, and those who do works of mercy do them cheerfully. A reading from St. Matthew. Jesus called the disciples to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Liz? Will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? I will, and ask God to help me. Will you carry out this ministry in accordance 
with the teaching and practice of the Lutheran Church. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you trust in God's care to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of God with a godly life? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Laura, Liz Boldman, I install you as the Director of Family Ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, as you called apostles and evangelists, pastors and teachers to instruct, comfort, admonish, and to care for us, so you have called this your servant. Fill her with wisdom and patience, with love and with faithfulness to your word, that she may with gladness teach, comfort, counsel, and guide your people to maturity in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide, bless, and keep you, that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been called. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome Liz Boldman as the new Director of Family Ministry at St. Mark. service continues with prayers of intercession. Let us be together in prayer. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Loving God, strengthen your church to pray and work for peace in Ukraine. Help people stay safe and protect them from getting hurt. Help the church care for families who are separated from each other by providing aid and community in Christ. We pray for love everywhere. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest creature. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect all life and beauty to prepare for the coming of your future, a new heaven and a new earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those that need hope, strength, and encouragement. We pray that you would work in their hearts, dry their tears, and wipe away their fears. Be their healer, comforter, and provider. We remember before you our extended church family, Jay Harbinson, David, Charlie, Virginia, Joseph, Robert, Rachel, Danielle, Carl, Jeff, Mary Lou, Paul, Jimmy, Rona, David, Carol, Debbie, Van, Shirley, Diane, Ron, Lois, Amanda, Judy, Hunter, Sarah, Mindy, Steve, Oakley, Stanley, Connie, Arlene, Luis, Anthony, Sergey, Carl and Barbara, and Diane. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the governments and leaders of the world. Grant wisdom to all governments and leaders to continue to work for peace among nations, especially in Ukraine. Help leaders of the Russian government to see that nothing good can come of war and the brutal annexation of a neighboring nation. Grant to the leaders of the nations of NATO restraint and perseverance to seek peaceful resolution to an increasingly hostile and entrenched situation. 
We ask your comfort and protection upon the communities and cities of Ukraine destroyed by relentless shelling. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the children, youth, and families of this congregation. Help them to grow in faith to you and love for their neighbor. Bless, we pray, Laura Liz Boldman to be a mentor, friend, and teacher among our young people, families, and the people of this congregation. Strengthen her in service to you and help her to grow in faith with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving God, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We offer you thanks for the life and witness of Doris Dixon, who passed into eternal life last week. Welcome Doris into the blessedness of your eternal kingdom, and may she share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Strengthen and comfort the extended Dixon family in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. Thank you. Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be satisfied.
please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Receive the sending blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.
Thank you for joining us online for worship today at St. Mark's Lutheran Church. You're welcome to join us for worship in person on Sundays at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. St. Mark's is a congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. Please join us for worship and stay with us to serve Jesus Christ, helping others discover God's amazing grace. For more information about worship and service opportunities, please visit us at stmarkscharlotte.org. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. May the peace of Christ be with you.